Flood is an annual phenomenon for the state of Assam. This year also, Brahmaputra along with tributaries have created havoc in the state. As of July 16, as many 68 people have died and 66 animals have died in the Kaziranga National Park, which is an UNESCO World Heritage Site. Nearly 18 lakh people have been affected so far across 30 districts. So let's see why these floods occur every year in the state of Assam. Also, we will take into account the measures to control these floods. Before that, let's quickly take an eye on Assam and Brahmaputra River. Assam is a state in Northeast India, which is the 16th largest state of India on the basis of area and 15th most populous state of India according to the Census of India 2012. Assam is famous for its tea plantations, Assam silk and one horned rhinoceros found in Kaziranga National Park. There are in total 33 districts in the state of Assam. Assam is divided by Brahmaputra River into two halves that is North Assam and South Assam. Dispur is the state capital and Guwahati city is the economic hub of the state. The most affected districts of Assam due to floods are Dhamaji, Lakhimpur, Biswanath, Sonitpur, Chirang, Golaghat, Dibrugarh, Tisunkia, etc. Now let's see some facts about the Brahmaputra River. Brahmaputra River with a length of 3969 km is the 15th longest and 9th largest river by discharge on the world. It originates near the Mansarovar Lake in Tibet region of China and flows in the east direction through several gorges and takes a turn near the Namcha Barwa peak and starts moving in south-southwesterly direction. The river then travels through the Assam plains. Now, the river is joined by multiple tributaries like Subansuri, Manas, Tista from north and Dibang, Lohit, Buridhyang, Dhansiri etc. from south. After travelling the Assam plains, it enters to the country of Bangladesh as Jamuna, then it is joined by Padma in Bangladesh and drains into the Bay of Bengal as Meghna River. Brahmaputra is a classic example of a braided river and is highly susceptible to channel migration. Now if we look into the terrain map of India, we will find that the northern part of India is covered with high mountain ranges that is Himalayas. Now, if we zoom into the northeastern region of India, we will find the extension of Himalayan ranges in the Arunachal Pradesh region and if we move further south in the regions of Nagaland, Manipur and Mizoram and Meghalaya, the Purvanchal hills are found. Between these Himalayas and Purvanchal hills, there lies a region of extremely low-lying area that is the plains of Assam. Now, if we zoom out the map of India and focus on the Tibet region of Himalayas, we can see clearly the origin of Brahmaputra river near the Mansarovar lake. Now, if we again focus into the course of Brahmaputra river, we can find the terrain of the region is highly undulated. So, Brahmaputra in this region has to travel into many gorges and while travelling through these regions, the Brahmaputra river brings huge amount of sediments along it. As the river enters the Assam plains, Due to a vast low-lying area is found, the speed of the river is reduced drastically and the process of siltation starts. So, the first factor that is responsible for the annual floods in the state of Assam is a large amount of siltation that the Brahmaputra river deposits in the Assam plains which ultimately results in the frequent changes in its course and making it a braided river. The second factor that is responsible is the rainfall. The areas of northeastern India receive huge amount of rainfall in the monsoons. As a result, Brahmaputra river receives waters both from Himalayan glaciers as well as the huge rainfall of the northeast India. So, this coincidence in the monsoon months results in the overflow of the river. Next most important factor is the topography of the area. It plays a vital role in the flooding of Assam. Assam is situated on an earthquake and landslide prone zone and the frequent quakes are responsible for its huge shifting course. The massive earthquake that shook Assam on Independence Day of India in 1950 not only claimed the lives of 1000 people but also changed the course of the mighty Brahmaputra river. The riverbed of Brahmaputra rose as the mountains of the area shook due to earthquake 
and a stable course of river became a constantly shifting course and a river eroding its banks. Now, lastly, the human factors and the climate change. With the enrochment of river banks, more and more people are living close to the river, which leads in the increased potential of damage caused by the floods. Also, we cannot forget the impact of climate change in the eastern Himalayas. That is, the glaciers are melting at a faster rate and increasing the water level of the river Brahmaputra. Here is a simple equation to say, human factor plus climate change is equals to increased damage. So, we have covered with the causes of the annual floods of Assam. Now, we shall see the measures to control these floods. Firstly, we will take into account the structural measures for flood management. First method for the flood management is constructing embankments, flood walls or flood levees. The embankment system in the river restricts the river to its existing course and prevents it from overflowing the banks. Embankments are most popular methods of flood protection and they have been constructed extensively. Where adequate space is not available, expensive concrete or masonry flood walls are created. But embankments may lead to the deposition of silt and rise in the riverbed levels. The another structural method for flood management is constructing dams, reservoirs and other water storage. Significant proportions of flood water can be stored in reservoirs, lakes and can be released subsequently when the flood is receded. Also, the stored water can be used for irrigation purposes, power generation and industrial uses. Another method for flood control is dredging of rivers. The basic aim of dredging is to remove silt. Silt, silt is a sedimentary material made of fine sand, clay and small sized particles of rock. Silt forms the river's bed. Therefore, by dredging or removal of silt, it can increase the capacity of river to carry water downstream. The process of dredging involves a vacuum pump that is used to remove the silt from the river bed. The next measure for flood control is diversion of flood water. This process involves diverting all or a part of discharged water into a natural or artificially constructed channel. The diverted water may be taken away from the river without returning it further downstream or it may be returned to the river some distance downstream or to a lake or directly to the sea. The next method is afforestation. Increasing the vegetative cover serves as an effective measure to control floods but it is not very effective during large floods. Now we'll switch over to the non-structural measures for flood control. These measures involve planning, policies for people as well as areas to reduce the impact of floods. The first non-structural measure is flood plain zoning. The basic concept of flood plain zoning is to regulate land use in the flood plains in order to restrict the damage due to floods. Another method is flood proofing. It consists of providing raised platforms for men and cattle, raising public utility installation etc. Other non-structural methods include flood forecasting and warning, integrated water resources management system etc. So by this we come to the end of the video. Hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please share and subscribe to my channel. You can also connect me through my Instagram. The link of the Instagram account is in the description. Thank you for watching and Jai Hind.